This is the first part of the two-part video demo where we will learn about the IBM Infosphere Optim Performance Manager, the version 5.1 packaging and how to install the product. Infosphere Optim Performance Manager is a performance analysis and tuning tool for managing DB2 systems by using a web interface. The product can be deployed in two configuration options. The standalone option only captures monitoring information from DB2 data server. The extended insight option offers extended monitoring of DB2 database as well as database applications. This first part of the demo will focus on the standalone configuration option. In the second part, we will go through the process of installing the extended insight feature. Before getting into the install process, let's quickly review the architecture of the product. Key components of Infosphere Optim Performance Manager include the repository server, connects to the monitored DB2 databases and uses monitoring metrics table functions to collect in-memory metrics for DB2 version 9, 7 and above databases, or snapshot commands for DB2 version 9.5 and below databases. The server also uses DB2 event monitors to collect database performance data and stores all collected data in its repository database. The console server runs as an application and connects to the repository database. The console server also allows users to use a web interface to retrieve the collected performance data and configure the monitoring behavior of Infosphere Optim Performance Manager. There are other components such as Performance Expert Client, but we are not going to cover the installation of this component here. We will install the Infosphere Optim Performance Manager server and then activate the license key for the server. There are two packages required for Infosphere Optim Performance Manager. Infosphere Optim Performance Manager Server, this is the base product. The License Activation Kit, this is the license key activation for the Infosphere Optim Performance Manager Server. Note that with the Infosphere Optim Performance Manager Extended Edition, this license activation applies for both the Infosphere Optim Performance Manager Server and also for Extended Insight. In this example, we will use the Enterprise Edition for which the activation is only for the server. Depending on the supporting platforms and associated part numbers, there are different files after we unzip or untar them. In this example, we show the contents of these packages for the AIX platform where we are going to install. There are few things that need to be prepared for installation on AIX. First, we should have DB2 installed on the machine before this installation because a repository database needs to be created in DB2 during the installation. If the server where Infosphere Optim Performance Manager will be installed already has DB2 ESE 9.1 or later, we can use it. Otherwise, we can use the restricted use license of DB2 Enterprise Server Edition version 9.7 that is included with Infosphere Optim Performance Manager. Second, root permission is required to install. Third, a DB2 user ID with Sys ADM authority is needed during the installation to access the repository database and repository server. Fourth, about 550 megabytes of disk space is required to store the full set of recommended downloadable parts and 1.5 gigabytes of temporary space to run the installation program. The root user who installs the product must have read, write and execute authorities on slash temp for Unix or C colon slash temp for Windows. To install the product using an alternate temporary directory, we could define the variable IA tempter to point to a different directory and export it before starting the installation. This directory must exist, be writable by the current process and have file permissions same as the temp directory in Unix or temp directory in Windows. 
The installation requires approximately 3.5 gigabytes for the product. In this demo, we will install InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager using the command line mode. Now, let's walk through the installation process of the product. Here is the list of files in the package for InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager server. To install the product on AIX, we log on as root user and run the install shell script to launch the installation in console mode. The supported minimum levels of AIX are shown here. Make sure your operating system meets the requirements. Next, we can choose to install the try and buy edition or a licensed edition. The try and buy edition is good for 60 days with the option to activate the license later. The license file enterprise.opm underscore LIC is in the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager license activation kit. In this example, we choose to install the try and buy edition and save all the settings in a response file so that it can be reused later for silent installations on other similar systems. Next, when choosing the installation directory, we must make sure there is enough space available for installation. We can choose to override the default installation location. If we were upgrading from a prior version of the product to version 5.1, we would need to specify the directory of an existing installation of the product. The installer would use previous configuration and therefore would not prompt for specification for the repository database. In this example, we do a fresh install and choose advanced installation to customize the name for the repository and its attributes such as database path, working directory and table space location. Next, we have the option to use an existing DB2 instance or let the installer create an instance for the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager. It is recommended to use a separate instance specific for InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager. In this example, we use an existing DB2 instance which has been created in advance specifically for this product installation. If we were migrating from an existing performance expert installation to InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager version 5.1 where the performance database of the performance expert is used and updated to the enhanced database schema for InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager, we would need to specify that DB2 instance here. The installer would detect all databases for that instance and list them here. We could either reuse the existing repository or if we wanted to migrate from performance expert, we would select the performance expert repository so that it will be automatically migrated during the install. For a new database instance, the default name for the database is perfdb. If perfdb is already in use, perfdb1 and so on is used up to perfdb99. We can customize the name of the repository database if needed. Database path is the directory for the repository database. By default, user underscore home is used on Linux and Unix and on Windows it is the directory where the product is installed. Make sure that there is enough disk space depending on the number of databases to be monitored. The working directory contains the log files and trace files stored by the repository server during runtime as well as some property files. The table space location is for the control tables that will store the performance data. We can either have the table space in the same directory as the repository or have it created in another directory. For optimal results, it's recommended to separate the table space location from the database directory. We can specify which type of table spaces InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager should create. It is recommended to use the automatic storage type or DMS type for better performance. In this example, we select the automatic storage table space type and specify the storage paths to be used. We can add as many container paths and adjust the size as needed. If we need to add storage paths later, we can use the alter database command. Next, we specify a username to use to create and access the repository database. This user must have sysadm authority on the DB2 instance and the console server runs using the same user. This user ID is used for initial logon to the web console and additional users can be added later. 
at runtime, InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager uses this user ID to connect to the repository database to access the collected data. In our example, we will use the DB2 instance owner as the user. The group name can be any operating system group, but it must exist in the DB2 instance. InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager grants the appropriate privileges to this group so the users of this group can log on from Performance Expert Client to the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager repository. Next, we need to specify the port numbers used to access the web console. There are two ports to be enabled, one for secure and one for non-secure access. Ensure that no firewall is blocking these ports. There is another port for the web console which is used internally for control of the console server such as checking status, starting or stopping the server. This is used only locally and does not require firewall configuration. Next, we have the option to specify how the server starts. In this example, we select to manually start IBM InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager instead of starting it when the computer starts. The pre-installation summary panel shows a summary of installation specifications for review. We press enter to proceed with the installation. When the installation finishes, we have the option to start IBM InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager and the associated console server right now or later. In this example, we choose to manually start them using the provided shell script after the install completes. The installation completed successfully. You can use either one of the two URLs as shown here to access the Performance Manager web console. Next, we change directory to the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager installation directory and we invoke the opm start.shell script to start the console server and the repository server using the ID provided during installation of the product. We can see details about the memory usage. The web console server is started and the port numbers are listed. Then the repository server instance is started. Process information along with details of the invocation parameters used to start the repository server instance and details of the startup progress are shown. To check status of the running InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager, we can invoke the OPM status script. The status shows information similar to what was displayed in the starting of the server but with updated information. Make sure the server status is active before you log on to the web console. If we had Performance Expert Client and the agent installed on the supported platforms, then we could see the status of these applications here as well. To stop the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager web console and the repository server, we can use the OPM stop shell script. After InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager is started successfully, we can select to open the web console using the secure URL to configure user access, define the databases and connections, and monitor the performance of these databases. In this install example, we are not showing those steps. Next, we move on to activate the license for InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager server. The license activation toolkit for AIX contains the following files. OPM server version 5.1.0 activate on AIX bin enterprise.opm LIC file. To apply the license, first we log on as root and run OPM server version 5.1.0 activate on AIX bin. Choose the installation language. Accept the license agreement. Select the installation directory detected by the installer. This requires the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager to be restarted and we select to restart the server. Review the pre-installation summary. Press enter to install. The installation is complete with the activation summary which shows the log file for the activation. Now that permanent license has been activated for the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager server, let's restart the repository server to refresh the license. 
To summarize, we have installed the InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager server and activated the license. We have also optionally started and checked the status of the console server and repository server manually using the OPM Start and OPM Status shell scripts respectively. For more information about various deployment types and configurations for InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager, refer to the red book shown here. For more information about IBM InfoSphere Optim Performance Manager Extended Edition and version 5.1 product offerings, visit us on the web here.